Welcome to Enduring Technology Press. I'm Eric. And uh, this was the year that I, my work interferes with my deer hunting, so I wasn't able to go up to hunt camp. But my father brought back some uh, venison, uh, got a nice, nice doe. Um, and he brought me back this. So we use a sawzall up there to uh, cut up the game. It works wonderfully. I use one uh, here at home a lot for that same purpose. And this one is a fairly good one, but it has, here's a little attachment that the blade goes in. Father brought it back and said, this is broke. Can you weld it? Well, it happens to be pot metal, so welding is a no. But I can machine one out of a block of steel. So it's got a rather little complicated, it's a T, internal T. Um, I could use the shaper to cut that, but I don't really feel like doing that. So what I'm going to do is make it in two pieces and then weld the cap on. That should be a nice easy one. So I'm going to turn a piece of one inch square bar stock which is oversized, um, but whatever, it's what I have, I don't feel like getting something else, into uh, a replacement that should last and last and last. So that's one of the advantages of having the tools. Let's see how I do. Step here is to uh, cut that one inch square steel stock to size. Well, if you can see the side, this is what uh, a little power hacksaw did much, uh, much even more even than uh, this was uh, the bandsaw that cut it at uh, um, metal supermarkets. So pretty nice fine cut, even if it did take like 20 minutes. But uh, I had some other work to do anyway around the shop, so not misplaced. So I'm going to square this all up and on the mill and then uh, start carving it out. So we've got that block set up in uh, the Harbor Freight mill drill and uh, this is a fantastic investment. I bought it a bunch of years ago and uh, I've loved it. It's got a huge amount of use um, and it really is a, a good mill, um, especially for the hobbyist. I mean it's a huge one for that. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up. Got a three quarter inch head mill and the collet. These just happen to be ones that uh, came out of McDonnell Douglas, I guess, after Boeing took over, shut down some of the works, and Wholesale Tool got them. And about the time of the last recession in 2008, the Canadian dollar was high and uh, nobody was buying and these were going for a couple bucks for nice resharpened end mills so I bought uh, I bought a load of them so I won't need to uh, run out and buy more which is good for a while anyway because uh, these would be fairly expensive they're pretty high quality so you can see here we've got uh, the block squared up and uh, we've uh, painted on some lay fluid and it's dried. Um, and now we've got this piece, I took the bolt out of, uh, or the cap screw out of the bottom. We've got our uh, height gauge and I'm just going to use this for transferring over the measurements. So we'll just work through this and transfer the lines. I want to show how these uh, little machinist squares really come in handy. Um, that piece would be laying a little bit lopsided, but I've got it leaning up against the 90 degree uh, this machinist square, um, and that's going to allow me to take those uh, inside dimensions and transfer them onto the block. So here's uh, 
the block of steel um, that I've done all the layout lines on and you can see what's beside that uh, broken one well, interfere with the light but and put those pieces back together so it's laid out I'll go put it in the vise and then uh, mill it to uh, down to those lines Show this to show what I meant by creeping up on your scribe marks. You can probably see on the left hand side hasn't been cut away. Uh, the right has. I'm using a three quarter inch end mill to uh, trim up the top and bring it down to the tight that I need. Um, so it's fairly aggressive in the first pass or two passes, but this last one I left about a millimeter of material left and um, just by eye lined it up and uh, that's what you get so we can be pretty accurate uh, without any fancy uh, measuring instruments this is just with uh, three quarter inch end mill resharpened end mill on a harbor freight uh, mill drill that I love but it's definitely at the low end of that cost spectrum one of the things you're going to want to keep in mind is that lights really help with this I mean if you're running with um, uh, just digital readouts or something like that it's not nearly as important if you're doing it to scribe lines you want some good light on it and uh, I've got two of these cheap from um, Ikea I think they're bedside type lamps just little 12 volt LED ones with a gooseneck that you can adjust so you can you know, move it around point it wherever you need and they're clamped on to uh, the motor mount really handy really excellent i think these were about 10 bucks so highly recommend those um, for any tool illumination moving uh that center ridge we've uh, got the upper part of that slot all cut so uh that's good so uh on to doing the lower section of it oh so our machining is done um here's the block so at least well it's a little bit too deep. We've got a few other pieces to cut, but uh, it's pretty much done. Uh, it's possible to see. Matches up very nicely. And the test we got here uh, sawzall blade should slide in nicely in there and be still be tight. And it does that, and it's very nice and solid. So. Uh, we're good to go and uh, cut a piece to fit on top and then weld it on both sides and uh, then come machine off uh, the overflow of the weld and uh, finish it all off. So uh, took it out and uh, welded it up with the stick welder just you know, probably all of five seconds to get it done. and. Uh, that stick welder, well, it's not the first one that I'd buy now, given how how easy it is to MIG weld. Um, I picked that stick welder up in high school, and uh, it's still serving me well. So definitely something that, uh, if you're all interested in being handy and doing your own stuff for yourself, picking up a welder is a great place to start with the grinder and stuff like that. So I'll go put this in... Uh, uh, the vise, go and trim off uh, the welds and uh, trim it down to size and then what we'll do is uh, cut it down, you can see it's oversized on purpose, we'll go trim it down to size, we'll go mill out this section here, we'll go mill out that, um, then we'll mark out for uh, the screw in there. These angles here and here I've got a couple options. I can either measure them and do them, you know, um, in an angle vise mounted on uh, the mill. Um, I could put uh, a smaller machinist vise into uh, uh, my big Kurt vise. But since this is sort of a fit and finish, I just used uh, the height gauge here to mark out the relevant points. So this intersection, this point there, those two. 
on both sides. I'm going to use ruler and a scribe. I'm going to mark them out. I'm going to adjust roughly even on uh, uh, by just clamping it in uh, the mill vise at an angle and then flipping it over on parallels and it should give me the other side. So uh, that's all I'm doing. Let's see how it comes out. Trust in how I set this up. I've done this a couple times when I don't want to bother uh, going with an angle vise or doing a complex setup. Use one of my thin parallels and put it on uh, the jaw and then slid this in and you can see the scribed line or can you? There you can see it sort of, it's the lighting. Um, and then you can see I lined it up. You know, this isn't perfect uh, by any means, but I found that it's generally good enough. So uh, that's what I'm doing. This gives you a good idea of the accuracy that's possible on, you know, a very, very simple setup. Um, we're just a little bit from uh, the finishing cut, but as you can see, Pretty accurate, pretty fast, uh, pretty easy work. Um, so you don't need much to get good work done. Piece you'll see is curved. Um, I've roughed it out on the milling machine. See the scribe marks? Just put it up against uh, this one, up against it, and uh, scribed it on as a pattern. But then. I'm going to use a good old file to finish it off. I don't have much material removed, just uh, finish that curve and contour over from the curve that I roughed out on the mill. Um, so you can do a lot with a file. Milling machines a lot faster, but uh, for some things, file still can't be beat. There's a couple of holes. Um, this one at the top, the smaller one, goes all the way through, and that's for the pin that uh, attaches it to um, uh, the shaft in the saw. And then this one is uh, drilled and then tapped uh, for an M6. So I've got uh, stuff set up uh, in the mill drill, um, the drill chuck with uh, center drill in it. I've got some oil over there and the appropriate size screw so I'll go center drill it uh, drill it up uh, and this one goes all the way through and then I'll go and uh, step drill center drill step drill this one out and come back and uh, tap it now showing examples I have a nice drill bit set of how this sort of you know pays for itself well in theory the time and practice I guess the time too that it takes to do this I could be working overtime and uh, making more than it cost to just replace the saw. Um, and it's overtime that's available now. It's not always available, right? Um, I picked this up. It was on sale for 29 bucks, And not so much for the Imperial taps. I have those and most of my projects are done in Imperial. But I didn't have a metric tap. And this screw is uh, metric. So I figured it was about time that, you know, I could have converted it over to Imperial and bought a new screw. But uh, I figured I might as well uh, grab some metric taps and dies and this was on sale. So basically for half the price of a new saw or a third of the price of a new saw, I'll have everything fixed and I'll end up with uh, a nice new tap and die set. So uh, a little bit of a payback into the tool shop uh, collection. I need to push this pin out. Um, and then later on push it back in. So this is where the hydraulic press is a really great asset. So let's see if I can do this with uh, just one hand. This is the 50 ton Harbor, Fres Harbor Freight one. Uh, they have a lot of nice ones that get downright cheap and if you have to use them they're great. So I'll press it out. Here's a bigger view of the, the press. Um, with the hand crank. It's a pretty good press. I enjoy it. Uh, it's not used massively, but when you need it, uh, as in cases like this, really does come in handy. Back in and installed everything, and uh, here's how it goes together with the guard off. But uh, stronger than the original, 
and it should work great. So, uh, cool little project. Nice to see it back together.